A cold shiver ran down his spine like a bolt of lightning. That's how Mike Noriega described his reaction to the sight of the collapsed 12-story condo that was once his beloved grandmother's home. Author and public speaker Mike Noriega received a devastating phone call in the middle of the night that would change his life forever. On June 24, 2021, a 12-story beachfront condo in Miami partially collapsed, killing 98 people. Mike's grandmother, Hilda Noriega, was one of them. In his book, Uncollapsible Soul, Mike shares how to endure a broken heart without allowing the pain to crush your spirit. He also honors the 98 souls that perished. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Mike Noriega. It's wonderful to have you with us, Mike. I'm so honored to be here. Your book is a powerful book, and, and the whole premise of it, um, of the core of it anyway, is this tragic situation that happened with your grandmother. You get a call out of the blue that something devastating has happened. You rush to the site, and tell us, tell us about that night. Well, my father had said that the building was gone. He was actually the first person to arrive. And this is and his mother that's, your grandmother is his mother. Yeah. Yes, and it was so devastating because my grandmother, her building was actually on the street that divides Miami Beach from Surfside. So when we parked, we parked in Miami Beach because of the sea of first responder vehicles. And so as we walked up, it was a partial collapse and it looked like the building was still there. It wasn't until we walked to the north end of the building that we realized that it was collapsed and we saw my grandmother's balcony right there. We now know that the first six stories of the 12-story building were in the parking garage and my grandmother lived on the sixth floor. And so as uh, we walked up, we saw her, bal her balcony just sandwiched between everything and all of her furniture, furniture yeah. thrown around it and trying to convince myself that this was actually real, that my grandmother was somewhere underneath that, mm. was just something that uh, was of nightmarish proportions. Well, the rubble was so extreme that even sometimes when people were located by the police dogs, they couldn't get them out because there was no way to lift that magnitude of weight off of people. Yeah. And many people died. That said, one of the things that made the story so difficult in my mind was that it went on for days before you knew who was alive and who was dead. So hope springs eternal. How did you manage holding on to hope for your grandmother and then the reality of finding that she was gone? When I first arrived on the scene, it, it, like I mentioned before, it was so overwhelming that there's some situations in life in which no man, no person can save you that you can only call out to God and just pray that he comes to your rescue. And what I realized about two hours after I got there, I had gotten away from the whole situation. I was listening to a song in my AirPods over and over that my church back home in Miami, Vu Church, uh, they wrote a song called Shelter In that just, it mm. claims all the promises of Psalm 91 about how God is our refuge and our strength and that he's our firm foundation. And as I was listening to that song over and over and over, I was just praying for God to do a miracle. And I, it felt like I whisper, it felt like a whisper from the Holy Spirit came into my heart that said, your grandmother loved me so much. Yeah. If she is alive under, underneath that rubble, my presence is sustaining her. But if her body's underneath that rubble, but her soul is in heaven with me, she's in my presence either way. Do you trust me with either outcome? Wow. And that's what gave me hope because none of us are making it out of here alive and so you have to have faith before you actually need it yeah and you know in that promise from god that his presence was with your grandmother who loved him dearly herself um certainly there was hope for you but but at the same time you and your book take that and you apply it to many things that happen in our lives. Not everybody's gonna experience something as extreme or unusual as a building collapsing and burying their loved ones, but the kind of hopeless mess that can come out of these situations yeah. to be replaced by faith. Talk about what God showed you in all of this. Yeah, so my book is really a gateway to each and every single person reading it, because the truth is, is that 
um, about nine months after the Surfside collapse, I connected with the other families. Mm -hmm. And to see the, the loss that they went through is, <laughs> it's, it's unfathomable. I mean, there was people that lost their entire families. Family, and family. so it, it, it made me realize that we're all going to go through collapses around us, but how do you go through a collapse around you without the collapse happening inside mm -hmm. of you? Yeah. And so we all go through burials, betrayals, breakups, and bodily breakdowns. We're all going to go through it. And so the whole book is based on Psalm 34, 18, that the Lord is near to the brokenhearted, but he rescues those who are crushed in spirit. Why does he want to be near to you when your heart's broken, but rescue you from a crushed spirit? It's because they're different. A broken heart is a season of grief. Mm -hmm. Even Jesus wept. Not even Jesus escaped sorrow. But a, a crushed spirit, that's losing your faith, your hope, and your purpose. And so God wants to rescue you from that. So the whole concept is really this idea of how do you allow things to break your heart without breaking your spirit? And that's how you make your soul uncollapsible. And where do you begin when you're at that place where your spirit is crushed? I mean, of course... We can say run to Jesus, but at the moment you're so devastated. What do you say to people who are in that place, Mike? Well, it's like a physical wound, right? <laughs> Nothing, nobody's going to say anything to you that'll make you feel better if you slice your arm wide open and you're bleeding, right? What you need is people around you to help you stop the bleeding and start the healing process. Yes. But it doesn't mean that the pain is not going to be there. And so there is a process attached with healing. And that's, that's another reason that I wrote the book, because I went through my own process of healing. And so it's really about this whole idea of how do you go through that process of healing, but give your pain a meaning where it's not the end of your story, but rather there's hope for healing. It's, the book is so rich with wise counsel. If you're going through a difficult time in your life, just want to suggest that you get a hold of this and read it. Mike's book is a tribute to the 98 souls who perished in the Surfside condo collapse. It's called Uncollapsible Soul, and that's what we've been talking about. It's available nationwide. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank Wonderful you so much. Wonderful to have you with us. Uh-huh.